Hello and welcome to another Tycho video. In today's video, I wanted to talk about timing. In astronomy, nearly every single measurement that we care about has a time component associated with it. For example, with photometry, we are concerned with the brightness of an object over time. And with astrometry, we are concerned with the position of an object at some given point in time. In both of these cases, there is a time component and we would therefore like to have some way in which to validate the accuracy of that time component to some degree of tolerance. So first of all, how can we achieve an accurate time source to begin with? Well, some cameras actually have a GPS receiver built into them. And for those cameras, they are able to inject a time tag into the exposure information. However, the vast majority of cameras do not have a GPS receiver built in. And under that circumstance, we can instead rely upon an external GPS receiver. For example, as you can see here, this is one such external receiver and it can plug directly into uh, the computer. And with the appropriate software, it is then able to update the computer clock accordingly. So with that, let's go ahead and take a deeper look at how we can validate the accuracy of a given time source. Okay, so in this example, I will be using one of the external GPS receivers. And as you can see here, this is the software that I will be using in conjunction uh, with that receiver. It costs about $20. And what's nice about it is that it has a nice graph to show the convergence over time and the current uh, estimated time error. So it's a nice visual interface and it appears to work fairly consistently. So what I'd like to do now is to give it a moment to reach a stable convergence and usually that's going to be a time error of around plus or minus five milliseconds and once that has occurred then we can take a look at acquiring some known object that we can use as a way to benchmark uh, the current accuracy of the timing source. Okay so what I'm going to do now is to use the satellite lookup module to get a list of GNSS satellites that are currently visible at my viewing location. Now GNSS is an acronym. It stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. And this would include Navstar, which is what we typically call GPS. It also includes Galileo, GLONASS, Beidou, and other satellites that have been launched into orbit uh, to provide position, navigation, and timing information. So the reason we choose one of these satellites as opposed to just any random satellite is that the two-line element orbital information is simply not accurate enough uh, for this purpose. It's good enough to get some idea where an object will be within some uh, number of uh, arc minutes, but uh, again that ephemeris uh, from just a two-line element is not accurate enough for this uh, particular scenario. But as it turns out, the ephemeris information associated with these GNSS satellites is extremely accurate, so we can use that as a way to validate the accuracy of the timing source. So as you can see here, the telescope is slewing to Galileo 19. This is a satellite that was launched in 2017. So we can give it a moment to complete this operation. In the meantime, I will also be configuring the monitor queue module. Now, this is completely optional. For this scenario, you do not have to use the monitor queue module, but I like to use it because it is a nice convenience feature what it allows Tycho to do is to automatically process incoming data sets as they arrive. In other words, it will invoke the auto run routine, which I have configured to make use of the fast tracker module. So ultimately, what this means is that it will automatically detect moving objects in a series of images. So again, it's a convenience feature. You could do this manually by simply invoking the fast tracker module on a set of images. But if you are working on a large number of data sets throughout the night, uh, it can be quite useful to have this monitor to queue module doing some of the tedious work for you. Okay, so now I am going to use the session planner to determine where the object should be located at the current time. So what this will allow me to do is to simply center the object within the field of view. And once I've done that, then we can start collecting exposures. And from that, we can then generate a series of measurements. With this first set, I am going to configure it to collect 60 exposures, each 0.5 seconds in duration. 
And as you can see here, the monitor Q module is incrementing the count of exposures that it has observed so far. And it will continue to do so until the data set has completed, at which time it will then proceed to launch the auto run operation. And you can also see that this is the Galileo satellite nicely centered in the field of view. Okay, so as you can see here, the data set has now completed and Tycho has now invoked the auto run routine, having been instructed to do so from the monitor queue module. And I have also configured auto run to invoke the pre-processing steps of calibration, plate solving, and alignment. So while those operations are underway, I also want to take a moment to look at the current estimated time error. And as you can see here, it indicates around two milliseconds for the estimated time error, and the graph indicates a good convergence as well. So this instills some level of confidence that the time source should be accurate. However, there are also other factors that impact the accuracy. For example, the acquisition software, uh, at what point in time does it actually apply the timestamp? So that's what we want to do here is to proceed with generating measurements on this object, and that will inform the true end-to-end -end accuracy of the time component. So as you can see here, uh, this object, because we took very short exposures, there's not much streak to it. So these are half second exposures, and this allows us to perform the normal point spread function centroid routine, as opposed to having to uh, create a ruler to measure the midpoint uh, of the object. So all I'm doing here is creating three different measurements. And once we have those three different measurements, then we can compare where the object should actually be located at those points in time. So at this point, I generate the IOD report, navigate to GNSS analysis, and finally, here are the results. Okay, so the first item of interest here is that it has correctly identified these measurements as being associated with the Galileo 19 satellite. Next, we have the cross track and along track residuals provided for each of the three different measurements. And what we really care about here is the average along track. This is related to the timing component, and it indicates an average along track of negative 0.1 second. And indeed, that is higher than specified by the software earlier, which indicated an estimated time error of around two millisecond. The difference here is that we have conducted a thorough end-to-end -end analysis of the timing component using this module. Okay, so at this point, I would like to try this process once more, this time using longer exposures. So I will be going from the half second exposure time to a five second exposure time. And the reason for this is to more easily determine the reference point used by the acquisition software. In other words, the acquisition software could be encoding the timestamp as relative to the beginning of exposure, the midpoint of exposure, or the end of exposure. So by using a longer exposure time, it becomes easier to determine what this reference point actually is. And as you can see here, I have acquired another GNSS satellite. This is a Navstar satellite. And because these are longer exposures, I will have to make use of the ruler to measure the midpoint of the streak. So as you can see here, the data set has completed and it has identified the object in the series of images. So I am going to zoom in here and then create a ruler from which I can then proceed to identify the endpoints of the streak. And then from that, I can then easily go to the midpoint of the streak. So having done that, I can proceed to create the observations just like I did before. And once I have these observations, I can repeat the process, essentially determining which reference point is used by the software. And that would be whichever one has the lowest residuals. Okay, so I have now created the measurements. So I proceed to generate the IOD report and invoke the GNSS analysis module. And as you can see here, the along track residuals are relatively low at around 0.3 seconds. Now this is with the assumption that the timestamp refers to the beginning of exposure. So now I want to try it with the timestamp configured to refer to the end of exposure. And this will allow us to determine what impact that has on the residuals. So I invoke the GNSS analysis module once again. 
and you can see that the along track residuals are now much higher at around 5.3 seconds. And just to be complete, I am also going to try it with the timestamp configured to refer to the middle of exposure. So I recreate the IOD report and invoke the GNSS analysis module once more. And here you can see that the along track residuals are now at around 2.8 seconds. So this instills confidence that the correct reference point is beginning of exposure for this particular setup because that reference point has the lowest residuals. So in conclusion, this is a good way to validate not only the accuracy of the timing source, but also to determine the correct reference point. That's about it for today's video. I want to thank you for watching and see you next time.